Good morning. Good morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of our celebrating and concentrating on the suffering and death of our Lord and Savior, we also know that he rose again on the third day and gives us life eternal in his name. This morning we're using the order of service on page 184 without communion. And let us begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake, grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives the power to become the sons of God, 
and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. To you, O of my soul. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame for I take refuge in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading for this, the third Sunday in Lent, is from Exodus chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
say to Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth so that it may become gnats in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, and there were gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats in all the land of Egypt. The magicians tried by their secret arts to produce gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, rise up early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, Behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants and your people and into your houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand. But on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen where my people dwell so that no swarms of flies shall be there that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Thus I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall happen. And the Lord did so. There came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses. Throughout all the land of Egypt, the land was ruined by the swarm of flies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness <coughs> must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. <laughs> to you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, while others to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul, and if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But, but if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. And finding none, it says, 
I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, o Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. Thank you. 
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We only had a couple of children here this morning, and I brought my bag of garbage along to talk to them about, but I didn't think they'd want to come, just two of them. Today's Sunday is called Oculi Sunday. It's a Latin word, it means eyes. And so the readings and the psalm verses of a liturgy ask you this question. Where do you put your eyes? What are you focused on? Where do you, do you place your gaze? You know, the advertisers know the power of an image and what it carries. But there's never been a better ad man than the devil himself. He wants to capture your attention. He wants to turn your eyes toward him in fear, in doubt, in worry. Those are the armor of Satan. And so he casts images and stories into your mind, trying to fix your eyes on these things. Perhaps the image he paints for you is one of financial hardship. He wants you to worry about what you will eat and what you will wear. He wants you to doubt that God will provide all you need. He wants you to be afraid that you're, you won't have enough. <coughs> or perhaps the tale he weaves for you is one of discontent. Satan wants you to focus on the fact that another person has what you want and don't have. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a better job, a better spouse, a better home, a more attractive physique, better grades. He shows you this picture and he encourages you to see yourself in it. To ask why others have it and I don't. Satan wants you to doubt that God is fair. He wants you to be afraid that others are getting ahead while you are falling behind. <clears throat> or perhaps the bedtime story Satan would whisper to you is one of shame. He wants you to worry that what you have done is unforgivable. There is no hope. He wants you to doubt that the promises of Jesus are for you. He wants you to be afraid that there is no escape, no way out, no forgiveness left for you. That you've had your chance and you blew it. And that you can't go home again. And Satan's a strong man. He's an excellent storyteller. And he, ha and he knows many more than the ones I've told about. And we could have mentioned loneliness or despair, heartache, pride, lust, greed, or a hundred others. He knows them all. He knows how to catch your attention and fix your gaze. He paints a convincing picture. He's well armored. 
And you were born in his kingdom. So he's fluent in your native tongue. He knows how to talk to your heart. So beloved, repent. Turn your eyes away from Satan and his stories. Wake up from staring at Satan's nightmares and see Jesus instead. Cast your eyes on him. For behold, he is a stronger man than Satan. He's come to strip Satan of his armor of worry, doubt, and fear. He'll take those away from him, and then he will also rob Satan blind and take all of his possessions. That means Jesus takes you out of Satan's kingdom. He steals you away by offering up himself as a fragrant sacrifice to God for the sins of the world. For behold what Jesus does. He lets Satan work out all his weapons on him. Jesus submits to whatever the devil can deal out. He lets every bad thing happen to himself that can happen. He loses everything. His money, pride, health and welfare, and finally upon the cross, his life. Everything is taken away from Jesus. Even, mystery of mysteries, the care of his father. As he cries out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And still, Jesus gains the victory. All the wrath against sin is poured out upon Jesus, God in the flesh. And still, he rises on the third day. Everything that a man could worry about or have reason to doubt God for or fear, everything falls upon Jesus. And still, he is alive and well, though he had to walk through death and divine wrath and hell to get it. So, beloved, wake up! Feel the icy waters of baptismal water thrown on your face. And open your eyes. The devil's kingdom never was anything more than a story, a third-rate spell told by a second-rate devil. The waters of baptism have shocked you awake and fixed your eyes on Jesus. As surely as a little water melted that wicked old uh, witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz, so Satan is undone by the water and the word of your baptism. You have nothing to worry about. In baptism, you have been made God's child. You have no reason to doubt. God Almighty has sworn an oath of blood to love you forever. You have nothing to fear. Jesus is, has taken upon himself all that you ever could have been afraid of and has destroyed them all. So shut your ears to the devil's lies or he still wanders around seeking whom he may devour. But if you look closely, you'll see that he has lost his armor. One little word can fell him. Jesus, God in the flesh, 
for you. Jesus is your great shield and defense. Nothing in the devil's armory can touch you since you are protected by the shield of David, the great I am, the Lord of hosts, Jesus of Nazareth. Cling to this Jesus. Be filled with his word, his story, his truth instead of the devil's lies. Come to absolution and hear the death sentence read to your sins as Christ forgives you. He kills those sins, buries them forever in his own tomb, and raises you to life with him. Come to the Lord's table as often as it's offered and have life poured down your throat. The blood of the covenant which bought your salvation. Receive the fruits of the cross. The fruits of the true tree of life. The body and blood of the Lord. Oh, beloved, cling to these gifts. The day is coming when the Lord will return and cut out the devil's tongue once and for all and stop his lying stories. We look forward to this day in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. You share in this heavenly reality each time you receive heaven on earth in the Lord's Supper. But still, on this side of glory, the devil wanders around seeking his prey. He's a strong man. Your house has been swept clean by the stronger man, Jesus. But if your house is swept clean and then just remains empty, well, the strong man will return and inhabit it again with his lying tales. So cling to the stronger man. Hide behind him. Seek his protection. Cast your eyes upon Jesus. And let your gaze remain fixed there. Hear him. Weave a new story for you. A tale of forgiveness and love. A true story that begins in your baptism and is renewed in holy absolution and strengthened in the Lord's Supper. These gifts of the Lord are for you, dear Christians. Here is where the stronger man meets you and keeps you in his kingdom. And he is faithful. He will bring this story to a glorious end in his kingdom where forever your eyes shall look upon your Lord Jesus who loves you to death and even through death to eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us arise and sing our offertory.
We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. In our prayers today, we want to also include our member, Roger Weck. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, guard the souls of your people against the devil and his angels who afflict the world. Arm your Christians with spiritual weapons, sharpen their tongues with the words of Christ, and overthrow all the power of the devil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Pharaoh refused to heed your judgments against Egypt and repent of his evil. Give your church godly patience to hear your words of rebuke in faith, to repent of our sins, and to seek the forgiveness you eagerly extend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, you call mothers and fathers to imitate you and to lead their children in the way of light. Strengthen them to flee all immorality. Instill in their families a repentant spirit and a living hope. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, direct the hearts of our leaders and teach them to respond faithfully to the dangers and disasters that arise. Lead them to humble themselves under your hand and serve their people sacrificially. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of all things, you govern our world for the good of your people. Provide seasonable weather, preserve us from plague and famine, and enrich us by the fruitfulness of the earth according to your gracious design. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Father, you have given us your own spirit in our baptism into Christ. Defend us from all spiritual attacks. Guard us in body and soul. Help those afflicted by any adversity, especially Barb, Dylan, Pam, Matt, Kate, Rebecca, Janine, Patty, Daryl, Kinsley and Delilah, Neil, Odin, Beth, Tom, Sean and AJ, and Roger. And lead them to renewed strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
Good morning. Glad you all woke up. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, we are having fellowship after the service today, so we will not be ushered out. So you can follow the choir out. After I go out, the choir can come out so you can get your robes off. They're not too great to be wearing all day. But also, um, the other thing I wanted to mention was Lenten services on Wednesday night, and we have supper at about 5.30, 5.45, and service at 7. So uh, please join us for that. And then I, we received a, an email from one of our members who's in Florida, uh, Mike Sugar and his wife. And I think we ought to share this with the congregation. We shared it already with the musicians, but uh, that's okay. He said, we don't realize how lucky we are to have Linda and Dick. We went to three different Lutheran churches and none of them had anything close to our music. So. You are appreciated. And you can continue on and on and on. <laughs> Any other announcements today? We also love our choir. <laughs> Terrific. God's richest blessings to you. <laughs>